In this video, I'll take you a little more in-depth on the production settings you saw if you watched the Getting Started series video about how to produce and share your recordings. We'll learn about the custom production settings option in the production wizard. Let's start at the beginning now. After you've clicked the Produce and Share button and clicked the drop-down menu, you'll be presented with several options. For example, you can easily send to screencast.com and YouTube as you may have seen in the Getting Started series. What's important to note here is that when you select an option, you are told exactly what to expect in terms of dimensions, format, and a description of what happens when that option is selected. For example, here we see that if we select this MP4 only option, we won't get the interactive features like table of contents, quizzes, and hotspots. But if we choose MP4 with video player, we'll have those interactive features included. Now pick the custom production settings option and click next. Here's where we'll really be able to control what we can do with our recording. You'll be asked how you want to produce your video. I use the MP4 Flash HTML5 player almost exclusively. In my experience, this works reliably pretty much anywhere I want to share my content. For this video, let's just stick with MP4. Now, click Next to continue. Here's where things really get cool. See all these tabs? They let you make your video everything you want it to be based on the encoding type you picked. Remember, we picked MP4. So this is what we can do with MP4 recordings. Let's start with the controller tab we see here. The controller is basically a wrapper that your video runs in. You can choose to include a controller or not. You can select Produce with Controller, and you'll get a controller bar like you see below. Selecting different player themes changes the look of your controller. I tend to use the default in my recordings because it hides itself, making it relatively unobtrusive. We can also decide what we want to do when the video ends. Click the After Video drop-down to see your options. I like to leave it at the default, which means my video will stop and show me a replay button so that viewers can watch it again if they'd like. You could also go directly to a URL. For example, at the end of this video, I could send you to the TechSmith webpage or to a specific tutorial. Here, I'll just keep the default. I like to leave the pause at start option checked because I don't often want my video to begin playing immediately. Finally, you can decide whether you want Camtasia Studio to use the first frame of your video as your thumbnail image, or if you want to choose a different image altogether. The thumbnail image is what appears behind the play button before you click play, or what is visible in your screencast.com library or on your YouTube page. Now click the Size tab. We'll talk more about what this tab means in another video, but here you can set different video and embed sizes. A few things to note. Any resizing here may degrade your video quality, ranging from so slight it's hardly noticeable to quite blurry. I tend to leave these sizes as they are to match my editing dimensions. If you do decide to play with these dimensions, the one thing to note is that you should never set your embed size to be larger than your video size. Video settings allow you to set your frame rate or how many frames per second your video plays. The higher the frame rate you choose, the larger the file size the resulting video will be. I tend to set my frame rate at the automatic level and let Camtasia Studio choose my frame rate for me. However, I then grab the encoding slider and move it to about 70%. For some videos, 50% may be just fine. Experiment with this and use whatever works best for you. I recommend you leave the rest of these options as default but feel free to experiment and see what works best. When it comes to audio, the Camtasia Studio default is set to be 56 kilobytes per second. However, I like my audio quality to be a little better than that, and I'm willing to have a larger file size as a result. For example, these tutorials are set at an audio rate of 112. In general, I recommend using between 96 and 128. Now click Options. The options here mostly control the interactive elements of your video, such as table of contents, captions, and quizzing. 
These features go a little bit beyond the scope of this video because there's so much you can do with them. Find tutorials in the table below or refer to the in-product help for tips on maximizing these features. One thing to note, selecting searchable turns on audio search, which lets your viewers search for keywords or phrases in your video. I hope you found this video helpful. To review the basics or learn more tips and tricks, I encourage you to check out the other video tutorials and send us your feedback on what you'd like to learn more about. Thanks for watching.